Hello everyone, in this video, let's learn about management of varicose veins and its complications that is a varicose ulcer. Now in varicose veins, you can either have the endoluminal technique or you can have the open surgery. In endoluminal, it can either be thermal or it can be non-thermal. In thermal techniques, we have the endovenous laser ablation and the radio frequency ablation and both of them are equally effective and are considered as a gold standard for treatment of varicose veins as per Bailey and Love. Both these techniques need the help of tumescent anesthesia. Now the advantages of using tumescent anesthesia is that it helps empty the vein, it prevents injury to the nerves and prevents injury to the skin by causing a heat sinking effect. Now moving on to the non-thermal technique that is the USG guided foam sclerotherapy. The most common sclerosin that we use is the sodium tetradesyl sulfate. The most common technique that's used to create the foam is the Tessaris technique with the help of two syringes. Now remember the mnemonic 1, 2, 3 and 4. At a time when you cannulate the vein, you can give only 1 ml and the maximum amount you can give in the entire sitting is 12 ml and the ratio of sclerosant is to air to create the foam is 1 is to 3 or 1 is to 4. Now in open surgery, what we do is the flush ligation and stripping. Now when it comes to varicose ulcer, you need to put a four layered dressing of which the inner layer is orthopedic wool followed by a cotton crepe and two layers of compression dressing in the form of elastic bandage and a cohesive bandage. So remember, four layer means the pressure that has to be generated should be 10 times. That means 40 millimeters of mercury. So this was in short about management of varicose veins and its complications. Thank you.